How's it going guys? So it's been a while since I've actually shown you what's in my bag and if you've been following the channel for a little bit you know that I recently made the switch uh, from Discraft back to an open bag about six months ago so there's been a, a lot of trial and error testing out new disc and a lot of new molds for me and uh, after a lot of uh, testing these discs out I think I finally have a pretty strong hold on what I'm going to be using uh, for the 2023 season and so I'm happy to show you what's in my bag today so let's get right into it. Starting out, I'm still putting with the OG Bland Jawbreaker Roaches. Uh, again, if you follow me, you know that I love these putters. They got a nice rounded edge to them, really straight flight with plenty of glide. These are the same ones that I've been using for about two to three years now. Um, pretty broken in, but still have a lot of life left in them. Got enough stability to hold up to the wind, so these are still my putter of choice. So again, the OG Bland Jawbreaker Roaches. As far as throwing and approaching, I got a few different molds, but the one I was most excited to put back in my bag by far was the Infinite Tomb. Uh, this was a disc that uh, for me, when it first came out, when I was throwing an open bag, um, it was one that I gravitated to just because it has the nice low profile that I like. And uh, so when I was with this craft, that was a, a slot that I was really missing. And so I'm happy to have this back in the bag. Uh, the Tomb is by far my favorite throwing putter. So I've got four of them in the bag currently. I'll start out with the D-Blend Tomb. I've got one that is very broken in. I pretty much use this exclusively for approach shots just because it is so broken in. However, if I need something to flip quick and get over to the right, I'll obviously go to this just because of how flippy it is. So I love having that one. Then I got another D-Blend Tomb, which is a little bit more stable. Uh, the other one will want to flip up and kind of dive to the right, whereas this one will want to pop up and just kind of drift. So they each have their purpose. This one's just a touch newer than the other one, uh, but the D-Blend Tomb, really quick uh, to break in, really enjoying these. And then I've got my premium plastic tombs. I've got my Metal Flake Color Glow. This one is pretty stable, but it's hit a few rocks, hit a few trees, so it's starting to fly a little bit straighter now before it has that fade at the end. So I can push this one about 280, maybe 300 feet, just on a straight flight, a little bit of finish at the end. And then I recently put one of the new Halo tombs in the bag. These are pretty overstable to start out. This one is still flying nice and stable for me. Could throw it into a moderate headwind and it holds up for me. So Halo tomb, definitely one of my new favorite additions to the bag. A disc that I was looking for though, um, because I didn't have any tombs that were flying pretty straight for me, especially in like a premium plastic, I was looking for something that I could throw hard that wouldn't flip over, wouldn't fade out too quick. And none of my tombs were really in that slot yet. So a disc that has really been a great addition for me has been the Star Colt. Uh, this was a disc that I used to throw a long time ago and I kind of forgot about. But when I went back to the open bag, again, I was missing that straight flying tomb where uh, it didn't really fade out, it didn't really flip over, and so the Colt was a, a great addition for that slot. So this is what I'm using, again, just for dead straight point and shoot shots up to about 300 feet. This thing has a lot of glide to it, feels really comfortable in the hand, very similar to the Tomb, and uh, really fills that slot nicely. So, end of a star Colt. Now, as far as approach disc, I've got a few different ones in the bag, and this might be a bit excessive, but what I've learned with throwing an open bag again is I get to throw what's comfortable. And so all four of these discs have been very comfortable for me. They've been great flyers for me, and they all achieve something a little bit different. So let me run through those real quick. I'll start out with the Big Z Zone. Uh, this is a disc that if you, again, follow me, you know you've seen this in the bag. Um, this is still pretty overstable. It's starting to get worked in a little bit, but I really enjoy using this for sidearm. Don't really like going to this for backhand too much just because I really want it to hold its stability. So I'm trying to use this exclusively uh, for sidearm approach shots up to about 250 feet or so. So the Big Z Zone, uh, big staple in my bag. Uh, a newer addition, it's not really a new disc, but it's one that I threw a long time ago and I kind of forgot about and uh, I'm happy to have it back in the bag and that is the Champion Glow Gator. Um, I really have enjoyed the Gator for backhand shots, so whereas my zone will be more for sidearm, I really like the feel of the Gator for backhand. It's got that nice uh, bolt feel in the hand and it's got a really nice overstable flight to it. I use this for anything about 250 and in uh, where I need a big spike hyzer or a flex shot. I know that this disc is going to do the same thing every single time. Uh, so I really like the Glow Gator for my backhand approach shots. A new disc to my bag, I actually got this in my player pack this year. This was one I was looking to try out. And this is the Pro Discus Troja. I think that's how you say it. 
it's extremely overstable. So where people are looking for like their Zone OS or their Justice, uh, I really enjoy this disc. This is by far the most overstable disc I've ever thrown. Um, it's a five speed, I believe, but it is just a disc that really does not want to fly. So I'm using this when the wind picks up or if I need something to dump hard to the right for a sidearm or to the left for a backhand, this thing is incredibly overstable. So if you're looking for something that really does the exact same thing no matter what, whether it's backhand or sidearm, it doesn't go far, I would highly recommend checking out a Pro Discus Troja. And then the surprise addition to the bag for this year, I actually bought this just on a whim, really wanted to try it out, uh, and that is the uh, Castaplast Berg. Uh, this is a disc that I really didn't expect to make the bag. I was just kind of playing around with it one day, and I started throwing this for sidearms, and I was really enjoying the flights that I could get out of it. This thing is incredibly slow. It has very little glide, but it's very accurate. So I'm really enjoying this for sidearm approach shots. Whereas my zone wants to have a lot more fade, this is a little more controllable. I can work it on different angles, and I know because of how slow it is and how little glide it has that it's just going to sit next to the basket. I don't ever have to worry about this thing uh, just burning by it, putting me in a bad situation where I've got a long comeback putt. So uh, really liking the Berg. Uh, I know there's mixed opinions about it, but for me, I'm really enjoying what this disc can do for me. So the Castaplast Berg. All right, let's step up to the mid ranges. Not much has changed for me in the mid-range game. I still am loving Discraft mid-ranges, and I'll start out with the ESP Meteor. This is a disc that uh, has been with me for a long time. The Meteor is a mold that I've always enjoyed just because it's great for beginners, it's great for pro-level players. This thing is incredible for hyzer flips. I use it mostly in the woods when I need something about 300 to maybe 330 where I just want the disc to pop up and ride straight, maybe get a little drift off to the right. Also really good for turnover shots as it just kind of holds that turnover line without ever really cutting and rolling. So really important disc in my bag, especially when I'm playing a woods course. But everybody knows my, my favorite mid-range is uh, the Buzz. I've been throwing it for years and it's a disc that I will most likely always have in my bag. But I'm really sad to say that I lost uh, my green Buzz that was with me for about five years and I was really having a hard time finding a replacement. Uh, with just a normal buzz, so I decided to put the Buzz SS in the bag, and this has not disappointed me at all. This thing has filled that slot nicely. It is a pretty straight flying buzz right out of the box, but what I like about this is I can really get it to turn over if I put it on that angle. It'll hold straight if I need it to, or it'll hyzer, maybe get a slight hyzer flip out of it, but these things are incredible. So if you're looking for a beat-in buzz right out of the box, definitely check out the Buzz SS. I still have uh, my old trusty Huck Lab Stamp Buzz. This is one that has been with me for about three years now, and it's starting to fly a little more broken in, but it's still pretty stable. I can rip on this hard, and it holds that straight line for most of the flight, but once it starts running out of speed, it likes to kind of get that late finish and fade at the end. So this is a disc that, uh, again, I know really well. This is probably the disc that I'm gonna reach for when I, I just need to get something in the fairway. I know exactly what this is gonna do every single time. It's incredibly consistent. And uh, again, it's something about knowing your disc. And uh, this is one that's been with me and uh, I'm excited to still have it in the bag. And then the last buzz I have is this Greasy Dye uh, ESP Buzz. This one is actually pretty overstable. I was amazed at how much fade this one had uh, the first time I, I threw it, but it's actually incredibly useful. So I can get the same buzz flight if I'm thrown into a headwind and I know that this disc will hold up to that wind and get me that nice straight flight with a little bit of finish at the end. So uh, Greasy Dyes, if you haven't checked them out, make sure to check those out. These are incredible dyes and uh, man, I love this disc. This is one that I'm really glad has made it into my bag. All right, going into the fairway drivers. This has probably been the part of my bag that was uh, where I experimented the most. This was uh, a place where I was looking for a lot of specific type of disc, and uh, I think I found exactly what I was looking for. And so one of the discs that uh, not a lot of people talk about, at least not in my circle, that I think more people should be talking about is the Mint Disc Jackalope. This was a disc that I was, uh, that I was looking for. I was looking for something in that seven to eight speed that had that nice hyzer flip pop up, but wasn't something that was just gonna cut over and roll. And that's exactly what the Jackalope is. It's a nice understable driver out of the box, but it's not gonna be 
uh, something that's going to flip over out of control. It's not going to be anything that is too overstable. It's just a perfect hyzer flip disc. So this is a lot like my Meteor, but in a fairway form. And it's definitely something that I reach for when I need anything in the 300, maybe even all the way up to like 380, where I just want something to pop up, get that nice flight and get that late drift over to the right. This disc is perfect for that. So if you haven't tried one of these, make sure to check out a Mint Disc Jackalope. Another fairway driver that I was excited to put in my bag was the Innova TL. I've always been a fan of this disc. I threw a lot of these uh, before I went over to Discraft, and uh, this was a, a disc that I knew I'd want to try out again. And this is one of the older TLs, which in my opinion, just tend to have a little bit more glide to them. This thing is great for just hyzer flip up to straight with a little more finish. Whereas the Jackalope wants to kind of turn more, the TL wants to pop up and ride and then get a late fade at the end. So. Very, very good compliment to the Jackalope. Um, very good in the woods as well, but just when well, I need a little bit more finish to it. Stepping up in speed a little bit, a disc that I'm happy made its way back into my bag is the Infinite Esplen Sphinx. This is one of the first run Zoe and Ike ones. I just had the stamp wiped off of it. But this disc is one of my go-to drivers, um, just purely for the fact that it can really range anywhere in distance from 330 all the way up to 400 feet. This thing is crucial in my bag. Um, I use it mostly in the woods, although I will pull it out in the open as well if there's not too much wind. It's just extremely controllable. I can work it a lot off the hyzer. So if I want it to hyzer flip to straight, hyzer flip to turn, it really does it all for me. It goes a little bit farther than something like my Jackalope and my TL. So if I need to stretch that distance just a little bit more, I know I can get it with the Sphinx. So this is a disc that if you're a beginner or if you're a pro level player, I highly recommend checking out the Infinite s -Blend Sphinx. Everybody has this slot in their bag and they certainly need it. Uh, I've got my two overstable drivers that I, that I lean on quite a bit. I'll start with the Champion Firebird. Uh, this is a flat top Firebird, although this one is I wouldn't say quite as overstable as some of the other Firebirds I've thrown. It's still got that nice stability to it, but it's one that I can get a little extra distance on the sidearm. Really like having this in the bag just because it's something I can trust in the wind and get some distance, but I know I'm going to get that reliable finish at the end of the flight. So Champion Firebird, really good for, for sidearm and for backhand. But if I need something with just a touch more fade, then I go to my Infinite Glow Scepter. This is a nice flat top Drew Gibson Scepter. This thing is very overstable. And it likes to get to the ground pretty much as soon as it leaves my hand. So if the wind really picks up, I know I can trust this one. Or if I need something uh, to get to the right a little bit quicker than my Firebird, I know I can lean on the Scepter and it's gonna do exactly what I need it to do. A new addition to my bag that I'm really excited about, um, I've been a, a PD thrower for a long time and so any, any disc that kind of fits that slot I've always gravitated to. When I was with Discraft, I really enjoyed the Vulture. And uh, this is a new disc from Infinite and it is called the Roman. Uh, this is uh, a 10 speed, nice overstable driver. I've got one in just regular s -blend, and then I've got a Halo s -blend. Uh, the regular s -Blend is a little bit straighter. This is going to fly more like a Thunderbird for me. It has a little bit more glide to it, but it still has that nice overstable finish at the end of the flight. This thing is going up to 400 feet for me. Just a nice, consistent, straight flyer, big finish at the end. And then the Halo Rollman is a little more overstable. This is going to fly a little more like a PD, although I still think it has a little bit, just a touch more glide than a PD will. Um, but really beautiful disc. I'm really enjoying this. And so uh, this thing is, uh, again, very reliable in the wind. No matter what the conditions are, I know that this disc is going to be nice and overstable for me. But speaking of the PD, I have to have a PD in the bag. This is a disc that I was really excited uh, to get back in my bag. And I'm really happy to have this greasy die one as well. This thing is incredible. This is one of the Nordic Phenom uh, S-Line PDs. This thing is very overstable. It's uh, not quite as overstable as something like my Firebird, so I can stretch out that distance a little bit more, uh, but it has every bit as much fade. So I know that I can really crank on this disc and know that it's not gonna flip over. It's gonna hold up and get that nice consistent finish at the end of the flight. Very reliable, definitely a disc that I lean on quite a bit. All right, let's go to the distance drivers. I'll start with one that's kind of the oddball because it really doesn't go that far, although it definitely fits the category of a distance driver, and that is the Infinite Slab. This is one of the old C-Blend flat 
slabs. This thing is basically just a dump disc. It's kind of like the Troja, but in a driver form. This thing, as soon as it leaves my hand, wants to get to the ground just like the Troja, but it does go just a touch farther just because it is a 12-speed disc. I use this a ton for sidearm shots. I use it occasionally for a backhand kind of spike hyzer. Good for forehand rollers. Very much a utility disc. Doesn't get used a ton, but it's one of those that I have in my bag. That way, uh, if I come across a situation where I'm kind of stuck, I know that I can use this disc and it's gonna get me out of trouble. So the infinite flat top slab. All right, moving on in the distance drivers. One that has been a great addition to my bag has been the Innova Halo Star Wraith. This has been a disc that I really gravitated towards for sidearm. I'm really enjoying it because I think it has the perfect mix of stability and glide. I can really snap on this disc for sidearm and I don't have to worry about it flipping over unless I force it over. And I know that it's always gonna come back and it's gonna get me a lot of distance. So anything about 350 and up for sidearm, this is what I'm gonna reach for. It is my primary sidearm distance driver. I'm just really enjoying it for all different types of shots. And uh, it's just a, a great looking disc and it's a great flying disc. So the Innova Halo Star Wraith. A uh, disc that uh, will come as no surprise if you followed most of my career, uh, a, a, the distance driver that has been my favorite ever since it came out has been the Infinite Faro. Uh, I just think it's the perfect distance driver, especially if you are not an elite thrower, but maybe you throw 400 plus. The Faro is a disc that I think you need to check out. It's got that perfect stability where it's not quite as overstable as a destroyer, but it's going to be a little more overstable than something like a Shrike or a Katana or something like that. And so I've got four of these currently in my bag. They all do different things. I'll start out with the one that's the oldest. This is one I had in my bag a long time ago. This is a second run Faro, nice pop top on them. I like to have most of them with that pop top just cause it gives them that extra bit of glide. Uh, this one is pretty broken in. This is a nice understable Faro at the moment. I can start it out on hyzer. It's gonna pop up and get that nice drift to the right. It will have some stability coming back, but if I need to have it finish off to the right, I just throw it a little bit flatter. Um, probably my go-to distance driver at the moment when I just have a big open field, nothing really to worry about. This is probably the one I'll reach for. Ones that I was really excited to try have been the Halo Pharaohs. I've got two of those currently in the bag. I've got this one that is a little bit lighter, um, but even though it's lighter, it really hasn't sacrificed that much stability. It still has that nice, uh, consistent finish at the end of the flight, but it's just gonna get me a little more glide. And so this is one that I'm really gravitating to for just pure distance, maybe not uh, trying to go max distance, but if I want something that's controllable and still get me a lot of distance, this is probably the one I'll reach for. And then I do have my max weight Halo Faro. This is one, um, again, just a little more stability. I can accomplish the same thing as the last one, but if the wind picks up, I know that this one will hold up just a touch more. Still gonna get a nice little turn out of it, but it's gonna have a lot more finish at the end of the flight. And then this is one that I had a long time ago and I was happy to put it back in the bag. This is a Pop Top Metal Flight Color Glow. And these have, in my opinion, been the most overstable version of the Faro. So this is gonna fly not quite as overstable as something like an Emperor or a Destroyer, but it has a lot of that same stability, but it gets just a little bit more distance. So I can rip on this one hard. I don't really have to worry about it flipping over. It's gonna go far, but it's gonna have a lot more hookup finish at the end of the flight. So the Metal Flake Color Glow Faro is a great addition to the bag as well. And then going into the last part, my overstable distance drivers. I've got two of them. I've got my Halo S Blend uh, Emperor. This is one of the discs that I was really excited to try out uh, when I made the switch back to an open bag. I've always been a fan of the Emperor, but trying them out in this Halo plastic, they're just a touch more overstable, very much like a destroyer. Um, but I would say they still have that good Emperor glide. And that's one of the things I've always enjoyed about it is it still has that good stability, but it's gonna go just a touch farther for me. So I'm using this for side arms when I need just a touch more stability than the Wraith, but I really like ripping on this one for backhand shots, especially when the wind picks up. I know I can get a lot of distance, but I'd never have to worry about this disc flipping over. And then if I need something that is just an incredible uh, overstable driver, I go to the Halo Destroyer. Uh, this particular run of Destroyer is very overstable, um, definitely more overstable than the Emperor. I can start this out with the Anheuser on a sidearm and it fights out pretty much immediately while still getting me 
about 380 to 400 feet of distance. Don't use it too much for backhand. This is primarily for sidearm, especially uh, again when the wind picks up. But nice overstable driver. Love having this in the bag. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this in the bag. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun for me to be able to test out all these discs, to see what these companies are making. And it's been a lot of fun just to experiment uh, with different flights, with different discs. And so I hope you've enjoyed it. I would like to give a shout out to my sponsors. I got a few new ones this year. Obviously I wanna thank Infinite Discs. This will be my sixth season with Infinite and it's been nothing but a pleasure to represent them. Also wanna thank Atlas Disc Golf Supply. They've been uh, my bag sponsor for the last two years. And guys, just an incredible company. So if you're looking for a quality bag at a pretty low price, make sure uh, to check out Atlas Disc Golf Supply. I also have some new sponsors that I want you guys to know about. One, you saw a few of their discs in my bag and that is Greasy Dyes. I've been uh, fortunate to be on the team this year with them and guys, I think they have the best dyes on the market. So if you haven't checked out Greasy Dyes, make sure to hit the link down below. Go and check out some of their stuff. They're doing incredible work. Also want to let you know about Official Golf Tees. Uh, there's a link down below. Guys, this is my new uh, clothing sponsor for this year. Golf Tees is based out of my hometown of Fort Payne, Alabama. And guys, they make incredible quality material uh, with their golf apparel, with their t-shirts, with their hats, everything. So make sure to check out Golf Tees. It's a small company, great company, make quality stuff. So make sure to check them out. And uh, my last sponsor is Flippy Disc Golf. I've really enjoyed um, the stuff that they've been putting out and I'm happy to be representing presenting them this well uh, this year as well so guys make sure to check out all these uh, sponsors by hitting the links below I got some discount codes down there as well so if you have any questions about any of it make sure to hit me up and if you have any questions about any of the discs uh, that I'm throwing uh, please make sure to let me know but guys I appreciate you watching hope you're doing well and I'll catch you in the next one